Welcome to the bold analysis. The Kenya Kwanza regime is very frustrated. And in this podcast, I'm going to show you how Ruto himself has exposed his frustration after his very first attempt to reshuffle the cabinet hit a snag. Today, Kithure Kindiki and Moses Kuria went late in State House for an event, a state event, that was supposed to be meant for signing performance contracts. Industrial parks, the year we are going to do markets, we are going to build this road, we are going to deliver on that dam. They think it's an opportunity for them to go and steal public money. I want to tell you in broad daylight, eyeball to eyeball, that will not happen. Please, good people. Yes. I have had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with my cabinet. I want to do the same with the rest of the government bureaucracy from PSS down to directors. It will not be business as usual. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that there will be no money to steal. There is only money to deliver on the programs, on the projects, on the aspirations of the people of Kenya. A political culture of poor promise keeping as well as endemic corruption has done significant damage to our social fabric by eroding trust in government and widening the rift that separates citizens' aspirations from government policy. We cannot afford to wait and see where this road may lead because it has already brought us to a very terrible place. It is time that this comes to an end once and for all. And I promise you, it will come to an end. For those who have engaged in corruption incorrigibly, because I, I know, for example, the people in the procurement space. The, the, there was uh, one lady in one of the roads departments, corrupt to the core, to the extent that she could not be transferred by anybody, even by the minister, because if she was transferred, she will go to court, buy the court process, and make sure that she's returned. That is the kind of chronic where corruption has taken us. I hope Mr. Kipchumba Murkomen and uh, Buanambogwa, I hope that lady no longer works for the government of Kenya. Yeah. We, we cannot have such. There are people who have made government offices their private property. You try to transfer them elsewhere, they go to court, they go to some agency, you find them back. It will not happen. Yeah? Those, those kind of things, we must put them behind us. We are servants of the people of Kenya. We are not their masters and we serve at the pleasure of the people of Kenya. We don't serve at their mercy. So, uh, it's going to be different. It is going to be different. I promise you it's going to be different. And uh, it's, not be, it's not going to be business as usual. And we are not going to wait until public money is lost. 
the moment there is signs that you have intentions <laughs> of doing something, we will deal with you firmly and, con and summarily. And uh, because we have enough people in Kenya who can, who can, who can do this, these jobs. Under our new bold vision of radical transformation, we must simultaneously implement policies, programs, and projects to achieve inclusive growth and at the same time undertake robust measures to eradicate corruption, wastage, and inefficiency. I have given my solemn undertaking to protect public resources during my term in office. I shall be held to account for the good performance of our country, delivery of our commitments, and the stewardship of public resources. I intend, by all means, to keep a good account of and that is why people resort to the old incompetent excuses that there was traffic for them not to be in a public, in a, the most important public function. We have a job because we have a contract. If you cannot keep time with your employer, you have basically dismissed yourself. I mean, it's just as simple as that. So, for those who came late, who are members of the executive, I will be expecting a written explanation, and it should not include matters of traffic. It is, according to what the information that we've received is, they arrived in the event 20 minutes, 10 minutes late. Actually, they arrived when the process of um, when, when Attorney General was submitting his papers. That's what uh, the journalists have been reporting. And now, that was them and some peers, principal secretaries, um, uh, principal secretaries and also some heads of uh, parastatals. But the reasoning was about traffic. And I want to tell you without blinking my eye. Do you think today is the first time that there is an event in State House? It is not. Between Kithuri Kindiki's office, Vigilance House, to State House, the same to where Moses Kuria's office is, in a very short distance. What is the coincidence of the two going late for that performance contract? And William Ruto himself is wondering why they went late. Why do you think they went late? And is it about the lateness? Now, for me, the whole question is not about even the lateness. My question, I, I took more interest in the way the matter was handled. I want to believe that is not the first time that members of executive or a high-profile member in government is getting late for an event or even for a meeting. I know. It is quite often that many times there have been those lapses. And if it is about the traffic in Nairobi, then it is a blessing in this case. So leaders should learn that they need to work for the people so that they, they, they decongest the city, perhaps. But I don't want to really deviate from it. My point I still want to hold is this. It is not about the lateness. It is not a coincidence that only the two are late. And as I said, look at the way that matter has been handled. Regardi Gashagwa came and mocked those who had already gone late. You know, it was hitting at them. The way the whole matter has been handled is, uh, you know, during that event, the media is there and they are covering. Now, why do you think William Ruto is a man that has always wanted his stuff to be under the carpet? Why do you think they have publicized it? You know, they've allowed the public to know that there are members of cabinet that have come for that meeting late. 
Why do you think they have allowed? Because that's the point. To someone in the middle of Bomet, when he hears that Moses Kure and Kindike went to such a meeting late, what does he think? It's already, it has already hit, it's already vilifying the two in public as people who either disrespect the president or this and that. And it can be a ground of dismissal. And if you look at that letter, he's saying that they need to write a letter and explain why they're not there. Now, I want you to, I listened to the whole speech. Then happen better, there is another one I wanted to listen to. President allegedly speaking about something where he was referring to some lady in the transport ministry, the public works, who could not be moved because of some corruption. Now, I wanted to listen to that because I'm drawing some political observation from it. There, there, there was uh, one lady in one of the roads departments, corrupt to the core, to the extent that she could not be transferred by anybody, even by the minister, because if she was transferred, she will go to court, buy the court process, and make sure that she's returned. That is the kind of chronic where corruption has taken us. I hope Mr. Kipchumba Murkomen and uh, Buanambogwa I hope that lady no longer works for the government of Kenya. Yeah. We, we cannot have such. There are people who have made government offices their private property. You try to transfer them elsewhere, they go to court, they go to some agency, you find them back. It will not happen. Yeah, those, those kind of things, we must put them behind us. We are servants of the people of Kenya. We are not their masters. And we serve at the pleasure of the people of Kenya. We don't serve at their mercy. Now, this is it. Do you want to believe that Ruto is referring to that mysterious lady? What I understand and what I can see from this is that it is not that example is just used. It was just used. But William Ruto was addressing members of his government that have declined to move from one ministry to the other. Take that to bank and borrow alone. Take that to bank and borrow alone. It is not about a mysterious lady in a ministry. If that's a figurative language, it is a figurative language to send a message. Because as, let me tell you, those, those ones that are yet are also out, there was a looming cabinet reshuffle. And what William Luther is saying is that, if you listen to the whole thing, is that that will not happen here. There are some people, he's simply saying that there are some people that have tried to move from one office to the other and they have declined. And that is why he's using it to send a message. Because what did that event have to do or what did lateness of Moses Kuri and Kindiki have to do with some lady in a ministry who has refused to move? And, and let's, let's reason. Huh? If, you know, it's... Get it. Let's get it. In the ministry, there are directors. If a director is moved by a cabinet secretary of the president from that ministry to the other ministry, what is the ground of going to court to stop that movement? You've not been fired. You've just been picked from Matalato from health to maybe sports. What's, what's the whole thing about? We've seen principal secretaries being moved from one place to the other and the other resigned or remained there. So even in law, unless someone has fired you, but in case of you being moved from one ministry to the other, going to court to challenge your movement, is, it, is there an illegality? So that even tells you that there is nothing like a lady who has refused to move from a ministry. William Ruto was addressing 
the fellows that have declined to move. And what is going on here? What you are not being told is this. Some members of cabinet declined a reshuffle. Yes. For a better part of last week, and Salim Davidi even mentioned that they were planning to shake the government a bit. But you see, in the modern day governance, People don't, just, people don't just wake up and the morning realize they've been pushed to another ministry. Because that he tried, uh, um, I remember P.S. Estangero was moved, there was a P.S. who was moved from the office of Musalim Davadi to the Correctional Services, Uku Kendiki, and she resigned. Yes, she resigned. That means she had declined. Now, William Ruto knows Kindiki. Kindiki was his personal lawyer. Moses Kure is his personal friend and so So before he even moves one person from one ministry to the other, I know it's right, logically right, for him to consult and maybe just ask him that, but it seems they have declined. And that is what he is fighting in that statement. What William Ruta is saying in that statement is about people that have refused to move. And why? Why do you think a cabinet secretary will decline to move from one minister rather than some sort of a reshuffle? It's because the public will vilify you. For example, now, uh, we've just come out from demos, from mass action, and 16, more than 30 people have lost their lives. That docket is led by Keture Kindiki. Now, Kindiki, if now you move Kindiki from interior to another ministry, what will the public see? The public will vilify Kindiki that probably is being moved because he committed some ills in that ministry. That's just the logic around it. While, truth be told, Kitaro Kindiki from the word go was very specific that we need to follow the law and if a protester is not armed, police should not interfere. But of course, after calls were made in the corridors, stray orders got its, their way in the police command chain and that's when things uh, went south. So he will decline. Someone like Moses Kuria, do you think he will comfortably move from that trade to another ministry? Where he's been moving and meeting African presidents and going to Dubai almost every month. And not even about that. He's been the, at the height of controversial statements with the media and fighting this. Even the US recently refused to meet him because of the political bad manners. Now, when you move him from that ministry to the other, what will be it? The public will believe, vilify him that pro probably he's been demoted. For example, I know now, there is no ministry. If you pull uh, Kindiki from interior, that's the most powerful ministry in government in terms of administrative level. So where would you take him? If you take him to another ministry, it will be demotion. Would he accept? So William Ruto is fighting a cabinet fallout that is emerging amidst the discussion of a reshuffle. And that is why, even if it is behind the lateness, there are some people that declined even to sign. They were a bit uncomfortable with those performance contracts. They would be probably get there, and when you're signing those performance contracts, you find out that you've been assigned in a new ministry. And even after that, and that's why Uruto is talking about giving some letters. Number two, the cabinet overreach under the one government policy is not sitting well with many. I still don't understand how health CS would go to order a, a police OCS or OCPD to be moved. It, it still doesn't add up. And probably these were some of the things within the cabinet ranks that are causing cracks. The cabinet is not holding together because of that policy. You know, now you, you are ordering. If if that is allowed, then you see, I listened to the Gashak was saying the way uh, security uh, details of the Azimio leaders is going to be returned after they behave well, allegedly behaving well. I don't know what he means by behaving well. And then that is a role within IG, Inspector General of Police. The politicians, no one is supposed to give direction to police except interior CS Kidiki. But you saw regarded commenting about it. If that is it, then what stops uh, Moses Kuria from ordering some police to go and uh, organize protests? Look at what happened. 
the plan to touch to 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 protest around Mamangene Gate, the person that announced it was Moses Kuria. So what stops it? Number three, and Ruto will have to regret this for this first term. The moment he allowed political assignments to continue, even after forming government, people did not come out of the political mood. Himself, he's been picking cabinet secretaries and head of parastatals and this, going with them in events so that they make political statements and they play political games. Then when, how, when do those people draw the line between Ruta the president and Ruta the politician? He has to blame himself for this because himself, he has not drawn the line. So, at what one or two casually, you know, sometimes you, you also need to be presidential. The fact that Ruto has been fueling uh, choppers and cars and moving to areas on every weekend to play politics accompanied by these politicians, by these MPs and the cabinet and, and, and these parastatals, heads of parastatals, is a clear blunder. And that is why people cannot take such... Con because people see him as a friend. They still see the Ruto they saw in the campaign trail. They are not seeing Ruto the president. So rather, okay, match, okay, match, and you're still going to be available, mingling with everyone. He has not worked on his presidential circle. That circle needs to be. You cannot be the president and want to mingle with everyone. Every weekend, every day, between Thursday to Sunday. And then you want these people to take you serious? No. But this is, if you ask me, the issue of the lateness is not an explanation about the traffic jam. And I can tell you, that is why even Dr. Him saying, give me an explanation, but don't talk about traffic jam. Because he knows it's not about the traffic jam. It's not. It's not about the traffic jam. It's about something he knows very well. The cabinet fallout. And it's spilling over into even, other, even the other parastatals. This is something that is here. Parastatals, how would you still take him seriously if for you to get those positions, you need to lobby with millions. You know, how do you, how, how does that person see the seriousness of a performance contract if for him to get head of a parastatal, he has to part with millions? Stop Kanyako was blaming the other day, Duale and some leaders, that they've been demanding, soliciting some bribes from people who needed the government job. So, if people are lobbying with money, how will they leave their work? How will they take it serious that you've called them for some performance contracts while they paid you? You know, so we got ourselves, we started on the wrong foot and do to have to shed off the campaign. When you leave campaign, come out of those weekend rallies, go and work in the state house, appear when it is necessary. These people will take you serious and it will be. But before this, it's clear the first reshuffle has failed because it was used, it was to be used to manage the situation. No, sacrifice that, sacrifice this. Same Moses Kuri has been doing this, now has put him there. Kindiki was in that ministry. Police, because police bull, handling police brutality is a problem that Ruto team are really struggling to manage. That's my take. Thank you.